What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to Some Dungeon Defenders 2. This one has been requested for quite some time now and it is time to take a look at the primary defense reflect beams. This is using the reflect beam as the main source of damage. Uh, this build is based off of uh, the build that Zombie Wookie has been using to climb onslaught floors. And in fact, Zombie was able to climb all the way well over floor 900 by using this build or using a similar build to this one right here. Now, one important thing to note. Uh, first off, if you don't have at least one Chaos 8 amp and a 10 out of 10 tenacity, it's best to not take this route. Uh, the reason I say this is it is really what makes the build. Uh, having that 10 of 10 tenacity with one amp so you can take it up to Chaos 8 is going to completely set this build up for success. Now, remember, you can always use the utility aspect of Reflect Beams at any stage throughout the game. However, you're going to have to get up to that floor 30 to 35 range, get your first amp, and that's when you're going to really recognize the true power of this build. Now with that in mind, there is no doubt that you can turn yourself into a one amp warrior and push as high as you want in Onslaught using just one Chaos 8 amp to turn your Reflect Beam Tenacity into a 10 of 10 Chaos 8. So let's hop right on into the build and some of the basics of the Reflect Beam. Now first off, when you're using Reflect Beams, remember the further away the target is, the less damage it does. It appears that it scales down to about 50% damage, so the torpedoes that are exploding on the Reflect Beam, if they're very close to the target, they're going to do more damage. If they're further away from the target, they're going to do less damage. So the further the way you are, the least amount of damage it's going to do, dropping down to about 50% of its overall damage productivity. Now looking at just the basic function of the reflect beam, uh, as we all know, the torpedo is the little ball of light that's running around the bottom of the reflect beam. When that little ball of light hits any of the nodes, it causes an explosion. Now this is one of the very powerful aspects of the reflect beam, it's for just 50 DU with just this four node and three segment reflect beam you're able to actually combine the power of four different defenses into this one little 50 DU defense. So each individual segment is going to have its own ball of light passing, and as that ball of light hits each individual node, it's going to cause that torpedo explosion. Now you can get some real power out of these. Now remember, as I mentioned, the further away you are, the less damage it's going to do. So this is not a uh, reflection of what you're going to see on a real regular basis. But just with the reflect beam itself, let's go ahead and let it ramp up here and get those torpedoes all the way around to all of the nodes. Looks like we're there now. Just at tier 1, this is 1 amp, so it's 0 of 5. I wanted to make sure to keep it at 0 of 5, uh, as I mentioned, so you're getting an accurate reflection of what you can get out of it with just the 1 amp. Uh, you see we're doing very, very nice amounts of damage. Uh, what, 6 million, 7 million, 8 million, depending on the crits. Damage per second, which is just exceptional. Now, when you get down to the speed cap, the attack is going to happen every 2.5 seconds. However, remember it's spawning that torpedo every two and a half seconds from the first node. Now it has to pass all the other nodes, which makes the attacks much more frequent than once every two and a half seconds. Uh, that's kind of the basic mechanic of using the torpedo and the reflect beam as damage itself. Now when it's fully capped up, the reflect beam is going to have a range of 800. Now what the attack range means is the area of effect of the explosion itself. Obviously it's not doing anything to the wall segment as far as like how far away you can place them or any other uh, factor at all other than just the explosion radius. However you are going to want to focus on this. So we're going to start at the top with the top build you could use for it and kind of work our way down. For people that don't have some of the either hyper shards or chaos eight shards available for this build 
Now taking a look at it, as you see, it's 0 of 5, so I've got 1 amp into this bad boy. Going with defense rate, tenacity, and anti-melee. Now, it is important to note, uh, controller servo is going to be very effective here as well. If you want to use controller as well, no problem. Swap out anti-melee, put controller on it. However, controller is going to, although it's going to apply that damage to any crowd-controlled enemy in the area, anti-melee is going to be about 5% more overall damage, and it's applying damage to the melee mobs, which are the mobs that are pushing through. You don't really see too many ranged mobs not dying. The ranged mobs are a little squishier in the game, so I'm not really focused on them at all, and this in addition allows me to get the benefit of the anti-melee without having to have any crowd control in the area. Now I am very regularly going to have crowd control in the area, there's no doubt, and that deciding, depending on how you want to use it, could be a deciding factor with whether you want to go controller or anti-melee. There's not a wrong choice on either of those. Now taking a look at the shards, of course we've got Hyper Shards and a Chaos 8 shard in the mix. So we've got Vicious Strikes, we've got Mass Destruction, and we've got Shattering Torpedo. Vicious Strikes is huge in the aspect of the Reflect Beam, and the reason is, is it gets it to the range cap just using one shard. So with Vicious Strikes down, we're going to be at that 800 range cap for the explosions just with the one shard. Um, without Vicious Strikes, you're not going to get all the way to the range cap, and although you, know, you can use this build effectively without being there, you want to get as close to the range cap as you can. If you don't have Vicious Strikes yet, I would probably suggest going with a Deadly Strikes, preferably a Gilded Deadly Strikes. Um, there's also a C8 mod now that is like a duplicate of Deadly Strikes, which will allow you to use a second one. However, of course, that would take two mod slots. Or you could always get rid of Anti-Melee and go with more range there as well. However, best in slot will without a doubt be Vicious Strikes, so that is what you should shoot for overall. Now, say you don't have these Hyper Shards, uh, as I mentioned, if you don't have the 10 out of 10 Tenacity in the C8 Amp, check out my other Reflect Beam video and don't focus on using it as your primary defense. Say you don't have Shattering Torpedo. Shattering Torpedo, of course, is a Chaos 8 Amp, or pardon me, a Chaos 8 Shard. Chaos 8 shards are going to drop around floor 30 to 35 and up. It's a random chance of getting one, there's never a guarantee, and just like all shard farming in the game, it can be, you know, quite elusive to track down. If you don't want it, it's going to show up, but the second you go hunting for it, you know you're never going to find it. However, if you didn't have Shattering Torpedo, one of the best routes to take would probably be to go with Destruction and just double stacking Destruction. So here you could use Mass Destruction, Destruction, and Vicious Strikes. Now, so say you don't have Mass Destruction yet, let's go ahead and get rid of both of those. If you don't have Mass Destruction yet, you're really going to want to go with Vampiric Empowerment. So Vampiric Empowerment, Destruction, and then if you absolutely have no Hyper Shards at all, Deadly Strikes. So this can be used without having any Hyper Shards and without having any Chaos 8 Shards, However, you're going to see a very large drop in power, and you see now that Torpedo Explosion range is down to 478, which, you know, it almost halves the range, of as far as talking about the range cap, just from that change. As you see, even with this shard setup, it's still doing two, over 2 million per attack with not an optimal setup, so it's still a meaty, meaty AoE defense that can be just wildly effective. Now let's take a look at why tenacity is so important there. Let's get rid of these. Let's go back to our powerhouse, mass destruction, vicious, and shattering torpedo. Now tenacity is going to block cyborg attacks. The reason you would use tenacity on any defense is because you don't like cyborgs and you don't like cyborgs disabling your stuff. Now there is no direct counter that's going to get rid of the frost orcs other than either outranging them or overcapping defense rate. Tenacity is never going to change whether or not the frost orcs will freeze your defenses. 
so frost orcs can still be a problem when using this build. However, you can easily manipulate the build to make sure you're focusing on taking care of those. One of the standard builds or standard, standard setups that I personally have been using quite frequently is something like this. We've got a lightning strike arrow with destructive pylon in the middle. That, of course, is going to buff the reflect beam. And then we can go with a proton beam for a little additional crowd control. And then one of the things that I've really been enjoying is even with that nerfed state of petrify, taking advantage of that petrify combo and going with something along these lines. This right here is just an absolute game changer as far as just massive, massive lane destruction. Of course, you're still always going to watch your mini map for anything that might sneak by as it is limited range with that 800 range on the explosions. However, you see we've only spent 150 DU and this is all I would use on quite a few lanes on in Onslaught. Now, say I wanted to go ahead and go to the average, which is 180 DU, you could easily add in, say, a Flame Aura in the middle of it. Uh, in addition to that, if you wanted to stack it up even further, you could put, say, a Boostara down there and get a Boostara in the mix as well. Now, of course, the more stuff you pack up here, we're at 220 DU now, so a few maps would allow for this type of build right here. However, this is going to give you some heavy duty power. As you see, my normal non crit attacks are over 4 million for each attack. Now, remember, this is for a mob that's right on top of the node, so a mob that's over here is not going to get hit by that 4 million. However, look what happens when we upgrade these things all the way up. It just makes these things hit like a truck. Now, remember, this is 0 of 5 Chaos 8. So if you are an endgame player and you've got lots of amps and lots of crafting materials laying around, you juice this thing up to 5 out of 5 and you have got an absolute wrecking crew ready to go. So the Reflect Beam can be used with unbelievable utility, as we already know, blocking ranged mobs, uh, blocking wyvern or uh, lightning bug attacks from flyers even. There's lots of different ways to use Reflect Beams just to progress. However, it is without a doubt an absolute powerhouse for end game and can just completely wreck some lanes. Now, as with every single defense in the game, Ascension's the same old stuff. Start off with defense crit chance in the utility category, then go to defense crit damage. After that, do what you want. In the defense category, go right into defense speed and then go directly into Reflect Beam Damage. Uh, you're going to want to go Defense Speed first, then Reflect Beam Damage, and completely maximize your Ascension setup. Uh, as you see, this is my Weapon Manufacturer Builder, so I went Weapon Man's first, and then went to Reflect Beam Damage. Having any amount of health on Reflect Beams is sufficient to get the job done, so you don't have to stack any Reflect Beam health until, say, you were at just thousands and thousands of ascension and had enough overflow to go into health as well then you might you know then of course you're just not going to have anywhere else to use it so you might might as well just put it on so don't sweat your defense health go full on defense power and maximize the hotness you can get out of these reflect beams taking a look on the dummy once again admittedly this is a bit of a flawed setup as it's not showing the mobs at range However, if we do what we just did right there, and we just go with the Destructive Pylon Boost, then we'll go with a Boost Aura as well. And remember, this Boost Aura isn't even set up for power. This Boost Aura is set up for crowd control, so it is slowing lanes, so I'm not getting the maximum amount of power. As you see, Tier 1, we've got what 12 mil 14 mil aoe damage wrecking it up right there in the lane now obviously this is with the mob directly in the center of all the nodes but if we take this all the way up oh man sky's the limit we are dishing out the wapow there's no doubt about it now remember the dummy is not being affected by anti-melee so let's just go ahead and take 60 percent of those numbers and stack those right on top for any of those berserkers or 
orcs or any melee mob that's rolling through is just going to get hit like an absolute truck. So hopefully this helps answer some questions with reflect beams. It can be a super strong defense. Uh, I don't really have any intentions on doing a massive onslaught climb again. However, I am just casually climbing onslaught now to collect all of those returning and new CA shards that are back to the game. However, this build can get you there. There's no doubt about it. So uh, as I mentioned, Zombie Wookie got all the way over floor 900 just using this build and it is just super strong, no question there. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention, the reason I threw the PDT in the back is let's take a look at that Shattering Torpedo, crushing earth damage. Now the reason I liked that setup I was using so much, let me go ahead and duplicate it again here real quick, with, what did we have, we had the reflect beam, then we had the lightning strike, our, uh, the poison dart tower, we'll just pretend that's still there, and the proton beam. Well, we get a double whammy here. Of course, poisoned enemies are going to get hit with earth damage, which is going to petrify them. Uh, petrify is not what it used to be, but it is still a stun, and it's still crowd control, so still going to be able to get the job done. Plus, we've got another absolutely incredible slow via the proton beam. This is going to slow mobs down to 35% movement. In addition to that, we've got the chance to freeze on the proton beams from the frosty beam shard. And then going back again to that shattering torpedo, it is crushing earth damage. So crushing damage plus the freeze is giving us the shatter combo for an additional 10% damage on top of that. So that will do it for now. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions about Reflect Beams, and I'll do my best to get them answered for you. So thank you all one more time, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.